So what do you get when you combine unrestricted gun access with unrestricted hate speech? You get today's America. Let's talk about that because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. Well, I'm sure you've heard by now about the prejudice-fueled incident of domestic terrorism, the mass shooting in Buffalo. Here is the reporting from CNN. Mass shooting at Buffalo supermarket was a racist hate crime, police say. And that article begins, a mass shooting at a supermarket in a black neighborhood in Buffalo, New York on Saturday was a racist hate crime and will be prosecuted as such, Buffalo Police Commissioner Joseph Gamaglia said Sunday. The evidence that we have uncovered so far makes no mistake that this is an absolute racist hate crime. It will be prosecuted as a hate crime, he said. This is someone who has hate in their heart, soul, and mind. The statement came a day after a gunman opened fire at the Topps Friendly Markets store, killing 10 people and wounding three. 11 of the people who were shot were black. You know, we have a lot of rights in America, and people often equate those rights with freedoms. You might even say they confuse rights and freedoms. You have the freedom to own an arsenal of assault rifles, weapons of war. You have the freedom to loudly express your hate of others based on their race, ethnicity, religion, orientation. You have the freedom to express that hate as a means to marginalize, demean, dehumanize others. Are these things really properly characterized as freedoms? Some segments of America, I would say the majority of the Supreme Court justices, the NRA, most Republican politicians, worship at the altar of unrestricted gun access. Some segments of America, like the Fox Entertainment Network and their ilk, use freedom of speech protections to worship at the altar of hate and prejudice and xenophobia. You know, if we really want all these things, all these freedoms, unrestricted gun access, unrestricted hate speech, then we just may freedom ourselves to death. And friends, the horrifically sad part about all this is there's so much that could be done by government, but it's not being done. You know, government has this paralyzing fear of doing anything in the arena of unrestricted access to weapons of war, in the arena of hate speech that inspires violence, doing anything that could then be twisted and contorted and used to accuse government of trampling on my First Amendment free speech rights, trampling on my Second Amendment right to bear arms. And it is this paralyzing fear of that criticism that keeps government from doing anything and just allowing unrestricted access to assault rifles, to weapons of war, and allowing our airwaves to be filled by unrestricted hate speech designed to inspire violence. How about the federal government set aside the fear of criticism and just start fighting for the safety of the American people? What does that look like? I have long said there are three things that we can do. We can regulate, we can legislate, and then we litigate. What do I mean by that? First of all, regulate. We use an all-of-government 
approach. Every single agency in the executive branch, from Health and Human Services, Department of Homeland Security, the FCC, Commerce, Labor, Department of Education, and all of government approach and executive orders by the president, all designed to get at gun violence and unrestricted access to weapons of war and hate speech filling our airwaves designed to inspire violent conduct. And all of government approach in the executive branch, start flooding the zone. Then we legislate, legislate, we go over to Congress. Congress should enact every and any law it can designed to get at those two issues, unrestricted access to weapons of war and unrestricted hate speech that is inspiring violence every day, particularly filling our airwaves. And after we regulate and after we legislate, we flood the zone trying to protect the American people. Then we litigate because the regulations and the legislation will undoubtedly be attacked. Oh, you're trampling on my first amendment, second amendment rights. Bring it on. Because if we have regulated and legislated thoughtfully and carefully, and in a way that honors the Constitution, then we embrace that litigation, right? We go into court and we fight it out. And what's the worst that can happen? Only two things can happen, friends. We win the litigation, in which case we have protected the American people significantly, or we lose the litigation, but we still win. You know why? Because if we lose litigation, if judges say, you know what, we understand why you regulated the way you did, but you ran afoul of the constitutional rights of citizens in the following ways, or we understand why you legislated the way you did, but here's how you may have run afoul or overstepped your constitutional bounds. We take those rulings, we go back, we retool, and we do it again. We get it right after we hear from the third co-equal branch of government, the judiciary, as part of the litigation process. So if we win, we win, and if we lose, we win in the long term because we learn how to regulate and legislate in a way that passes constitutional muster while protecting the American people. You know, nobody said governing was gonna be easy. But these things we must do for too long. We have just refused to take the first step on the road to really addressing unrestricted access to weapons of war, unrestricted hate speech on our airwaves that is inciting violence every day. There's no excuse to decline to take that first step in the quest to protect the American people. That's what government should be doing. All of government, regulate, legislate, litigate, because justice matters. Friends, as always, please stay safe. Please stay tuned. And I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow.